Welcome to Manor Lords. Oh, wait, mm, sorry. Welcome to Manor Lords, the most wishlisted game on Steam, and the same game I'm going to be completely breaking. Unlimited money, free buildings, and most importantly, infinite units. With a few creative uses of intended game mechanics, I'm going to be breaking this game wide open. And on an unrelated note, thank you to the dev for giving me an early access key. Much appreciated. So without further ado, let's get into it. So if we go into new game, we can go and customize our insignia. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick with the old B hive over here all right so we're just gonna go with the default map and scenario and then start the game all right so getting into the game itself we are greeted with our people our goal is to destroy our opponent over here and dominate his regions here in the top we do have all of our resources those are construction these are more food fuel for running fireplaces and homes crops crafting materials commodities and military stuff Although right now, we just want to start off with a logging camp, which will give us a little bit of income, and then also a saw pit to refine those logs. On the top left side, we have the number of unassigned families and the number of assigned families. This game, unlike most other games, assigns workers by family. So although we have 10 population, we only have 5 available families to work. The next thing we'll do is begin our great suburban planning by starting to build houses. Houses in this game are very interesting because instead of building the houses themselves, you build little zones here for burgage plots. Our approval is going down and we do need our approval above 50% to get immigrants and more families. And obviously lowering the approval rating is the rampant poverty. All right, so over here, we're gonna come and put down a couple of burgage plots. The little area that is above the housing area. So we have the main housing area and then above it is the room for an expansion. Expansions in this game are very important because they allow your houses and your workers living there to generate additional resources beyond their job. So coming over here, I can zone a marketplace like this, and that is going to give all of our people stalls to actually sell and distribute their goods. So for example, our berry collector over here is going to collect the berries, and then that same family is going to set up a stall in this marketplace area to actually distribute the berries. Great, now we are building all of the homes, which is going to slowly increase that approval. The homelessness is kind of bad. And we are also going to increase our settlement level. Thank goodness. So settlement level is going to give us development points. If I come up here and click this button, we now have access to the whole development tree. Now again, the game is in early access, so a lot of this stuff is not finalized. A bunch of things are locked. But uh, of all the skills that are all around here, only two of them actually matter. Now you might think something like heavy plowing is a really great skill because it's going to enable us to plow our fields like 10 times faster. But it's not because we're not going to grow any food. See, if I come over here, we have another talent tree, which is kind of like the merchant talent tree. And the first one is trade logistics, which is going to help us establish more trade routes, which basically makes it a little bit cheaper. But what really matters is the skill right here, which essentially breaks the game. And I'll show you when we actually get it. Also, I know I mentioned the expansions real quick. And uh, if I go into our burgage plot over here, you can see I can construct an additional backyard expansion. We can grow a bit of vegetables, add a chicken coop, some goat shed, so on and so on and so forth. Later, you could turn your people into artisans, so they'll just become blacksmiths or bowers or armorers, things like that. Within each burgage plot, you can also see that they have different requirements and amenities. So for example, everybody wants a church. They need fuel for staying warm, two different types of food, as well as a bit of clothing. As soon as we fulfill all these requirements, we can turn this level one burgage plot into a level two burgage plot, which essentially means we get rich people. All right, so the next thing we need to get building is a church because that is going to increase our approval a ton. Throw it down right there. The location doesn't really matter that much. All right, now with the church that's going to slowly get built up, uh, I am actually very surprised that all, all the animations in this game, they're actually not too bad, especially for a game that was only made by literally one guy. All right, now the church is going to be done, and churches are really great for increasing your early happiness. And if we go to our happiness up here, you see that in the recent 30 days, the church level is going to bring our approval just a little bit higher, which is 100% necessary because we do desperately need more families to move in. Oh, there we go. That is our first family moving, which is fantastic. The last thing we need to do is give them a little bit of clothing. And for the first level of clothing, we could just give them leather or linen, and then they could just sew that into clothes themselves. I also keep getting resources stolen by the nearby bandits, which is pretty bad. We don't really have a militia right now to actually fight them. But if I come onto the map up here, you can see there's a whole lot of other regions we can claim. Provinces, the other lord stuff as well, different resource deposits. And all the ways over here is a brick camp that we do eventually need to come over here and fight. Something else we can do for a little more food income is come over here and build one 
massive food area. See, I can make a burgage plot, but then lower the number of plots down to only one house. All right, awesome. So as soon as this whole area is built, I can come in and then we can get a backyard expansion for vegetables. The vegetable yields actually depend on the plot size. So as soon as we construct that, it is going to cost a, a good amount of our wealth up here. But now that this whole thing is done, it is going to start growing vegetables as soon as a family moves in. Our tannery is also going to start creating a bunch of leather. And then as you see, they even set up a stall right here for selling clothing, which is really awesome. And then if I come over to our burgage plots, the clothing stall supply should very soon be satisfied. All right, nice. Now that it's satisfied, I can come over here and upgrade the plot to level two. I think this one as well. Yep, another level two. And these level two plots are obviously going to house people that are a bit more wealthy. They look a little bit nice in the other plots. Nothing adds realism to my medieval city builder game like class division. So these level two burgage plots are actually going to slowly generate us wealth as well. Every single month, they will give us a single region wealth. Region wealth is different from our treasury up here. Treasury is our personal money, which we can spend on mercenaries and our retinue and, and stuff like that. And the region wealth is pretty much what we're using to import things, trade, and do most of the money-based situations that are based in this one area. And upgrading this second burgage plot over here should level us up immediately again. There we go. Set up at level increased. So if we come over here, we have a new development point. Let's get into here. And as I said, on our tree, there are a lot of different useful things, but the only one that is actually useful is this one right here. Better deals. Removes the tariff from foreign imports, effectively reducing all import prices by 10. So I took the liberty of building a trading post over here so I can show you what that actually means. If I come over here to the trade tab, you can see that we have all kinds of different trades that we can go do in order to get different resources. So if we look at our basic trades right now, we can trade stone for money or import stone for even more money. So here it says 1 and 11, where the 1 is the export price and 11 is the import price. On all goods in the game, there is a tariff of $10 placed upon every single good. So you see 2 and 12, 3 and 13, 4 and 14, and 8 and 18, so on and so on and so forth. However, with the talent right here called Better Deals, this essentially removes the tariff. So as soon as I take this and then I come into our trade again, you will see that it's only one number now because the export and import prices are the same. Now, in most games with trading systems, there is always some kind of market fee or tariff. The reason for this is because if there isn't, you could usually commit this goofy little thing called arbitrage. In the meantime, what we do need to do is just survive the winter. So as long as we can survive this very first winter, we should be totally okay. All right, let's also do a little bit more city planning over here, where we're essentially going to create the medieval equivalent of suburbia. Now that it is winter, we do need to be a bit more careful, try to build a couple more houses, get a little bit more immigration, should get 10 tools stolen by bandits. Oh my god. All right, at this point, we do want to probably start mobilizing some units just in case the bandits, well, we actually have to go kill them at some point. So if I come into army, we can go and create a new militia, which will do spears because that's the only stuff we have right now. And with 18 available male recruits, we can come in and then we can form the militia. Each of the people in the militia will go and try and find all the gear that they can get. And they're just going to go about and live their normal lives until specifically we rally and raise them. Until then, they're essentially just normal peasants, which again is very faithful to medieval wars. There were very few knights in the medieval times. It was almost entirely just armies of really poor, stinky peasants. And our army is no exception. Or at least it will be for a little bit until I just get essentially infinite units worth of plate armor. Okay, also now that we have a couple more people that have moved in, we can come and rally our spear militia. So what this is going to do is essentially call everyone to war and then they're all going to form a nice old group over here that we can kind of deploy in a sort of total war kind of way. Look controls are pretty rudimentary right now. You can see that some of the, the deployment stuff doesn't exactly work as you would intend, but the fundamentals of the system are actually really, really cool. Now we just need to march all the ways over here to go fight these brigands, which is going to take absolutely forever, but you know, I have the magic of editing. So, okay, editing magic over. We can approach these brigands over here as soon as we get relatively close. There we go. They're going to start coming towards us. All right, I'll just set up my units in a bit of a wall here. We do have a couple different stances. We've got stand your ground, increase our defense, Defense, uh, increase our attack, balance, and then attempt to block most ranged attack. Also, who, who are you? You are in the wrong place at the wrong time, pal. Something else that exists in this game is actually a little icon up here, which is visit mode. It is very early in development. There's a lot of glitches in it, but uh, it allows me to just be on the map. I'm relatively sure that the brigands are somewhere in this forest, so I'm just gonna, you know, use my... Oh, wait, is that them? Yes, it is. How you doing, my guys? Everything, uh, is everything good? Oh, 
He is a ghost. All right, we are a lot more better armed than the brigands. We just charge them over here. And hopefully, you can see that the combat is... It actually looks pretty decent. You can kind of see where the Total War inspiration comes in here. And of course, we're going to take this opportunity to, uh, you know, see what's going on here. Is uh, is everything everything all good? Yeah? Everything okay there, pal? So we are slowly winning the battle. I could just fast forward through this because the fighting is going to take a little bit. And they are going to rapidly die. And there we go. As soon as we come up here to this good old bandit camp we are going to be able to claim these resources uh th this kind of menu kind of reminds me of frostpunk i also just recently played frostpunk too so maybe that's why but either way now we get a bunch of spoils of war and we are going to send those to the nearest town there is a little bit of a glitch right now where for whatever reason specifically when you send resources to your town you'll see it's 170 and then it should double in just a second and there we go now we just got another 147 reach in wealth for, for i'm not really sure why it's just a bug in the game right now oh and there's also a another bandit camp that just got okay hold on seriously how many times do i have to teach you a lesson old man all right let's just kill these guys too real quick because this they, we should be able to make pretty short work of the bandits our units are a whole lot better equipped and a whole lot better trained i mean not that we really gave them any training another thing that killing bandits does is that it uh, also gives us influence you can see up here we now have 640 influence because we killed those bandits influence is what we use to claim different regions so if i come over here and i go try and claim this we could claim it with influence king's fervor isn't implemented right now but claiming with influence would cost 1000 and we would get the region so now that we have 629 region wealth it's time to get a little silly as soon as we start mining clay over here clay will show up in our crafting materials i believe as soon as we get a little bit of that all right so as we start rolling in the clay we're already at 27 i can come over here and build us a very special building which is actually not all that special more of just broken and that is a clay furnace so now we could use this to turn clay into clay tiles so now that the clay furnace is done we can go and assign one whole family to it it does require a bit of refueling so we are going to want to be able to afford a whole bunch of firewood we do need more and more firewood eventually as the city grows because it does become a very limited resource and now as you can see we are immediately just popping all of that clay into a bunch of clay slabs they're called roof tiles but i mean really all they are is just is just clay now you might be wondering why are roof tiles so broken. I mean, what could possibly break the game about something so simple as clay? Well, you see, I'm not just making clay. I'm going to bury the entirety of Eastern and Western Europe in a mountain of clay. If I come over to my trading post, we got a little bit of money from the bandit camps that I can now use to establish some trade routes. The first trade route that we want is in materials, and that is going to be for clay itself. So as soon as I establish this trade route, I can go and set a desired surplus for my clay. We can go and import a whole bunch of it, and I'll make the desired surplus about 100. Now I can come over here and click follow merchant, and you can see this merchant is going to make his way all the way to the trading post. We'll just give him a moment. And as soon as he gets there, we can see that that clay is about to go from 55 all the ways up to 100. Now you'll see that did cost us $45 because clay does cost about $1 per import well roof tiles cost eight dollars to export and import so right now i'm just gonna mass up a bunch of roof tiles because we are going to assign a whole bunch of families to the clay furnace and then we're gonna start building more clay furnaces i'm even gonna go so far as to unassign our miners in the clay pits because there's just no reason we don't need stone cutter camps either we're not really gonna need any more food by this point because we have essentially begun the industrial revolution now a lot of money is obviously very good but that is not the end of this exploit. As a matter of fact, it is only the beginning. But for right now, we just want to mass up a whole bunch of clay. As our, oh my god, we're already up to 31 roof tiles, which is insane. Again, spending money to import clay really doesn't mean anything because we can just import clay forever from you know, the, the gods themselves. Okay, great. Now I have maxed out the clay furnace. It is going to be fuel. It is going to be worked by five families at the same time. I mean, half the town is working in this clay furnace. And I haven't sold any of the roof tiles yet. So let's just come into here and do an export trade. And we'll keep about 20 of the roof tiles for di different construction stuff. All right, here's Mr. Merchant. And he's going to come in and just give us a cool $400 from all the clay we just exported. The only things we care about is just having clay production and 
and trading post production. Now money in this game is truly a beautiful thing because with enough of it, you could basically do anything. Because we've essentially created the most powerful way to make just insane amounts of cash. All I have to do for food is come and go to food and then we could just import infinite berries, bread, eggs, vegetables, whatever. The world has become our oyster. And of all the things I can choose to do, I'm just gonna make more money. We're making the mother of all roof tiles here, Jack. Can't fret over a few collapsed economies. Another thing I can do is try and upgrade enough uh, one of these burgage plots in order to get our village up to a large village. All right, great. That's gonna increase our sediment level. Now we have those five out of uh, five. And it's also going to solve our biggest problem because the only weakness with this whole setup is that these clay furnaces do require fuel. And fuel is one of the few things that we can't actually buy here. Planks are not what you process into fuel. You only need logs and you can't import those. Except if you go into the talent tree, foreign suppliers, new building, firewood cart. All it does is produce enough firewood as long as we have enough regional wealth. The food cart does the same thing, but with bread. This means that we now essentially have infinite firewood and infinite bread. So the next big project we want to build to further this ridiculous exploit is the manor. The manor is essentially supposed to be our, well, like feudal lord's house. So we put this down over here and now we can customize a whole bunch of stuff. There is a tax office, which is just cosmetic right now. There's uh, an outer tower, give us a bunch of archers. We can build walls and gates around the perimeter. But what I care about specifically is this garrison tower. Increases maximum retinue size by 12, limited to one per region. This building is completely broken. So I'll just throw this down over here and then I can go and commit right now and our people will start to come over here and try to construct this. Oh, I also forgot, uh, it looks like those raiders are finally here, which is unfortunate. I'm just gonna go into my trade, establish a trade route for spears, and you know what? We'll just import, I don't know, like 50 spears or something. And then we'll establish some large shields and we'll just import about 50 of those as well. All right, so our money is gonna take a pretty sizable hit here. It will be uh, minus 300, that's ah, not that bad, minus 350. So now I can just come into my garrison. Now our garrison is maxed out because we have all the equipment in the world. And I can just come over here and form an entirely new one right there. We've got basically just stupid amounts of equipment because I could just buy all of it. And now if I wasn't prepared before, I am totally prepared now. All right, the enemy is going to come over here down up the hill and we are just going to completely smush them in this fight. I'll even do my best to, you know, rally the soldiers. Uh, go go get them, guys. I, I mean, I mean, we outnumber them, I think, by times three. Also, what, what are you doing over there? So, uh, what side are you on? All right, fantastic. Now our manor is completed. This is going to give us access to our retinue. So over here, I can come over and rally our retinue. These guys are essentially our much more heavily armored units. They're actually a bit trained. They've got better equipment. You can see they're wearing chain mail and all around just better. Unfortunately, I'm also very capped on them. So you can say I only have 24 retinue. I normally would have 12, but this tower over here gives me an extra 12. So we are capped at 12. 24. Or at least that's what the game would want you to think. The traditional way you're supposed to get more retinue is just by coming over here, claiming more provinces, building more manors, and then you can build more manors and get more retinues. Except what if I told you, you could just get infinite retinues anyways. So the first thing that I need though, is we do need to increase our land tax a little bit. 10% uh, is just gonna take 10% of this money every so often and then give it to us. So something else we can do with our retinue if we use our treasury up here is is go and customize them. Here, we can actually change all of the weapons and armor on the retinue. Now, right now, I believe it's just cosmetic, but what I can also do is import plate armor. The cheaper option is buying it locally. Why would I do that? So I'm just gonna import the armor and now I can make my guys a whole lot cooler. We'll give them actual helmets. You know, they're, they're much more geared now than they were before. And I'll just go ahead and do that for all of my knights, turn them into absolute badasses. And I can also start using what treasure I have left to begin recruiting man-at-arms, which is essentially just recruiting more knights. So I'll just do the same, continue giving them full plate armor, and we will try and max this out by getting a full set of 24 retinue. Oh no, resources stolen by nearby bandits for clay. First of all, why are you stealing clay? Second of all, why are you stealing clay from me? I don't think I need to tell them how awful of an idea that would be. All right, now that I have $1,300, I'm gonna come back into our retinue custom 
optimization, and then I'll just add, uh, you know, basically every single more unit I can. I'll just import all of the armor. We'll turn them all into fully kitted out plate armor dudes. And now instead of needing to rally peasants every time to support them, right now I'm just gonna rally them themselves and our whole retinue, which is somehow all living in that one house. All right, now the bandits are gonna come over here and try and fight my retinue, which is, you know, this is a holy kitted army of just plate armor warriors. They are not winning this. Okay, yeah, that, that is not taking very long. I, and they already broke. So by this point, our retinue is pretty good. There is 24 out of 24 units, but I kind of wish there was more. So if I come over here to the manor and I open the castle planner, what about this garrison tower building? Now it says it increases maximum retinue size by 12 and it's limited to one per region. Here's the thing. That's a lie. It's not limited to one per region. I could actually just put down as many of these as I want, even if it says that the limit has been reached. For right now, I will just put a couple of these garrison towers down. Uh, I don't need to spend all my money right now. I do need to have enough funds available to actually commit to the construction. So we'll just plop that down right now, and then we will begin to build. It is a monumental task, but I'm also just importing 200 stone and 200 planks every month because I can. All right, fantastic. So now that I've completed the manor, we have a whole bunch more garrison towers. So what happens when I go and click the retinue? Oh my God, it's 72 now. And with customization, I can just come in here with my stupid amounts of cash and I'm just gonna immediately recruit all 72. They, uh, they actually start going off the screen, which is unfortunate. It means that I can't actually upgrade all of them to plate armor because I, I can't physically select the ones below this layer. But what it does mean is that I could just come in here and let me just rally the ret- Oh my god, they just teleport out of the void. My swarm of retinue is now just gonna begin rallying. And look at that, we've got the whole squad is lined up right here. <laughs> So I believe there is a bandit camp. Yep, there it is over there. And as you might expect, they stand absolutely no chance against us. Let's see how fast they die. They are just immediately surrounded and killed. God, this is, this is beautiful. This is what I imagined the medieval ages were like. Full of exploits and intrigue and someone just pulling out their infinite population dupe trick. Now, obviously I still have insane amounts of money and stuff. So I'm just gonna keep putting these things down. The unfortunate part is the game does pretend as if these are all somewhat new costs. So what I have to do is essentially just build a metric ass load of logging camps. So we're pretty much just gonna annihilate the entire forest. I don't think uh, the Lorax is gonna have much of a say when I cram my 72 knights down his throat. But in the meantime, another large part of the game is, well, expanding. So I can use my influence over here to claim this region right there. And now we can build a second whole town center here. All right, nice. That is our other region claimed right over here. And now I'm pretty much just gonna go and do the same thing with all the clay and all the importing in this region too. Ah, looks like we're getting our second raid over here. And it is a, hey, you know, it's a pretty sizable number of brigands. Although it just so happens that my retinue was all the ways on the other side of the map because I was trying to clear out some bandits. Not that I actually did that. And there we go. Now I should be able to just, I mean, I, mean, I wonder if I'm will just clear up all the brigands with just the one group of retinue. Okay, well, uh, yes. The, the answer is definitely yes. And I didn't even take a single casualty. My god. Okay, I didn't think I would actually hit the upper limits of how many planks I can physically import. The fact that importing 599 resources is just kind of becoming like an average normal everyday thing is, uh, is probably not a good thing for the economy. You know, it's nice to walk around my settlement every once in a while uh, and then get lost because honestly this place just looks like a giant suburbia it is really cool though to just you know come around go through the markets a little um in a in a, in a literal sort of sense okay several hours of grinding have transpired and i have taken the monumental task of deforesting essentially the entire province. All right, finally, we have hit 1,000 timber, which means now if I uh, quickly save again and then come into our castle planner, uh, we can now rebegin the great garrison tower placement. Oh, yeah.
<laughs> you know, I really hope that I'm able to actually construct all this. It seems like I'm gonna need a little bit more planks, but that's not really that big a deal. All right, finally, I have enough resources to go and just begin the construction of all of these garrison towers. I am going to pray the game does not crash. And now we wait as 1,000 logs, 1,500 planks, and 1,000 stone are all transported here. Oh God. All right, so after a bit of grinding, the manor is finally done. And uh, as soon as I go into my soldiers, 1,212 retinue. Oh my God. And the best part is while I was doing this, I also figured out another glitch. So if I go into the manor here and I go and open the castle planner, all the resources I have here, I can actually just go ahead. You know, we'll just, we'll just throw down a couple more random towers all over the city. It doesn't really matter. As long as I have enough resources to commit, that's really the only thing that matters. So I click commit. Commit. Game almost crashes. That's fine. Then I quickly save the game and reload it. So as soon as we get in here, you will see that when I click the manor, all of the resource costs have been refunded. And it now only costs a single manor worth of equipment. So now if I just fast forward here, you will see that very quickly, all of these things are going to get constructed because they are absolutely free. This also might accidentally be duplicating resources. I'm not entirely sure about that. Timber has gone up quite significantly more than what I expected it to. So now I'm going to be able to rebuild this entire manor completely for free. You know, all things considered, by this point, uh, I, honestly, I expected the game's frame rate to be considerably lower because we are increasing the population past astronomical levels and it's about to get really bad when I hire all the men at arms. Oh my god, I also just realized that it looks like uh, this region over here is going to be claimed by this other dude. So we can resolve this claim on the battlefield and declare him as our enemy. So he's going to raise a whole bunch of enemy units over here. Let's take a look at his army. All right, I mean, you know, that's a that's a fair army. Except I am going to come over here to my not constructing manor, and then I am just going to add a bajillion retinue into this army. <laughs> We're looking capacity of 312 uh you know you, you can imagine that we're we're probably not gonna be losing this fight also i have about fifty thousand dollars and my tax income is off the charts because i'm just selling so much clay oh my god are they all gonna come out of like one little house yes every single one is coming out of one house Holy Jesus, it's just bringing everyone from everywhere. I've artificially inflated the population up to 498 because most of the people in this town are just retting you. Oh my. <laughs> This is so ridiculous. Now, as you might imagine, the AI is, uh, it's, it's a little confused because I don't think it's supposed to have this many units on the field. And now we can just start the battle and probably completely demolish everything. Well, it shouldn't come as much of a surprise that they're, they're losing and very badly. As a matter of fact, they're even charging us from all sides, but, uh, you, you can't really surround an army that's 10 times your size. And there is our victory over this very first province over here. But as you might imagine, you know, only about 300 soldiers. Ah, yeah, those are rookie numbers. So, uh, let's return to the real party. My limit on retinue is now 1,776. So if I come into retinue customization because the matter's done, um, well, you, you grab some snacks. I'm gonna be here a while. Okay, wait, I think I found all my units. I got them all stuck inside here. Okay, I think the only way out of this is that I have to just reset the entire building structure. So I I, I, I should have figured it was probably not a good idea to do what I did. All right, now if I recommit, the game might crash. Okay, thank God. <laughs> it's just everyone is huddled around the manor. There's just a thousand people in this crowd. You know, from this angle, it looks like there's some kind of peasant uprising because all of my infantry have been surrounded by peasants and they can't get out. All right, so now it's time to just destroy our opponent completely. Uh, I have how many retainers? 1,271 in my one army. So as soon as we rally them out there, oh my god, it actually worked. Holy Jesus. They're just 
flocking from everywhere. So we're gonna resolve this claim on the battlefield because my army is so massive. Well, I'm not sure what my infantry are gonna do as it pertains to moving. You can see they uh, they get a little confused sometimes. I mean, very disciplined to be moving in single file, to be honest. Holy Jesus, they're just turning into a singularity. Okay, maybe if I tell them to spread out, it'll be a little... Okay, that doesn't help. <laughs> Okay, I figured out a way to get them to move. I call it the inchworm. I have to keep reforming the entire formation, but slightly more forward every single time in order to get them to actually move. All right, well, we'll get there. Don't you worry. Also, I'm, uh, I'm experiencing severe starvation because my population is shot up to 1,640. All right, as long as I make my units move perfectly straight, it's actually possible to move. Barely. Okay, finally, the enemy is gonna actually try and do something. I'm not even sure. They keep running back and forth because I think they're just too afraid of all my units here. Wait, they just... They just all died. They <laughs> just instantly died. Oh my God, that's beautiful. I think the battle just timed out or something, but either way, I mean, I'm gonna come over here and claim this other region with influence anyways. I mean, if I can't win with an army of 1,271 plate armor knights, I don't know what I can win with. Okay, finally, we've actually gotten into combat, even though half of my units are just kind of like running in random directions. <laughs> the, the game is beginning to break down because there is definitely not supposed to be this many things on the field. Okay, the enemy army is basically breaking at the mere sight of us. And, okay. <laughs> I'm trying as hard as I can right now to control the camera. Trust me. Putting it into the third person mode is also not much better because, well, you know, I feel like I'm playing a slideshow right now and i can't really blame the game for it okay by some miracle we managed to win that i just stopped moving and the enemy began to just run into my army and i mean it worked now i'll just come up to this screen and we will claim their very last province all right well if we can win this final battle this should be a victory for us and a wipe off of their units off the map i also brought an extra 50 retinue that i pulled from another settlement uh, i'll just, just bring them in here they're a little bit less glitchy which is nice just watching this wave of infantry walk around is uh, and, and just break enemies with their mere presence all right and this should be their very last unit as soon as we just charge these guys into oblivion that should be the rest of the uh rest of the baron's forces completely dead all right there we go oh i didn't even realize there would be a cutscene for this but that does mean that i think we have what is is that supposed to be us or is, is that just a random guy okay that was just a random guy and with that there is a victory uh it only took you know over 1,000 knights phasing into each other to get there but we got there this game is really cool. Thank you again to the dev who gave me a key to play this game early access. I know I just spent the entire video trying to break this game explicitly, but otherwise it is completely amazing. The combat is pretty fun when, you know, you haven't broken it. The base building is interesting, and even with the game being in such an early state, it's still really fun even at this point. Regardless, thanks for watching. See ya.